this video what we're going to do is we are going to walk through a basic problem not basic but a problem that i've run into a couple of times in my application so right now you can see we have this basic form and we have these two sections we have a credential section where we gather email and password and we have a personal information section where we gather information if implemented correctly we clearly want to make sure that we have the ability to do um, uh, validation so you see we're validating that this is not a valid email so let's change it to a valid email and that works we can check our password this is all basic and then down here we also want to be able to do validation so you can see um, if I don't uh, see when I if I don't enter the birthday it says the birthday isn't entered I enter the birthday um, then all my information is gathered and then I can create the account but the interesting thing that I've done is I've separated these into separate components because imagine you have a complex form where there are multiple components. And so what we're going to do in this video, we're going to show how I've created a separate component to manage the credentials. I created a separate component to manage the personal information and they are sitting in a larger form, which manages I'm submitting the form plus also validating the form fields. So you could have a scenario where I have like, 10 different information components that need to be added to a form and how do I treat them as separate components, but bring them all together, validate them together and get all the data back. You can see that I got the information back from each one of the components and they're broken up into the credentials. So the credentials object gave me back this information and my personal input component gave me back this information. And um, the flexibility that comes with this is that if all I, if I have another form that I want to create and all I need is personal information, I just take the credentials component out and the same container will work properly. It'll just return this information. So what I'm really trying to do is provide a level of flexibility with my components and really focus on a component architecture. Um, so hopefully you'll stick around and check the videos. I walked through the code on how I made this work. If there's enough interest, I will show you also how you can create stories to test and validate each one of these components um, individually. Um, as usual, please make sure you like and subscribe and let's get to the code. Okay. Um, so now we're in the code. Let's just walk through what we have before we start to add um, V validate and kind of connect all the dots. So as I stated before, we have a top level container, which is my homepage. And if you look at my homepage, you can see we have our normal header. Uh, and then let's get to the interesting stuff that we have going on down here. Let me clean this up. So we have our content container and inside our content container, we have another component called create account form. That is what all of this information is right here. Everything excluding the button, no, in including the button, sorry. So that's the form. So basically I can drop this form in a modal, I can drop it in a page, I can drop it anywhere I want. That's what we're trying to do. We're trying to focus more on building components. Um, this down here is just for me to kind of dump the output because this create, create account form emits an event called create account. Um, that event, when emitted, um, will give you the parameters that came from the form when you created a, an account, or it'll give you null if you did not. And what we do is we just dump them out on the bottom of the page. Um, that's why we're setting params here to results value, and the results value is rendered in its div, which it will appear below. So the next thing that we have is, um, let's go into create account form. So if you go inside a create account form, let's ignore kind of all the styling stuff to create the headers. But what you'll see is the, the real meat of it is that we have, am I in create account form? Yes, I'm in create account form. We have the two individual components. So you can see right here um, inside of this first card, let's inside of this first card here, let's put some space so you can see this clearly. That's card one and then this is card two. This first card right here contains this credentials information. And inside of that card, there's a component called credentials component, which we'll take a look at. The credentials component has the email and the password. And then down here in this lower card, we have the personal information and then we have a component called personal info component. And then we have this handle um, create account. The idea is that when I click on, um, when I click this button to create account, that we will go through 
every component that exists on this page and validate all the form fields. And if the form fields are successful, then we will, you know, do the right thing, i.e. Um, get the results from the component and pass the component back up to the parent container. Sorry, not pass component, pass the values from the component back up to the parent container. So now let's kind of look inside of one of the components. Um, the two components are structured pretty much the same, but let's just look into each one individually. So let's take a look inside of the credentials component. So if we go over to credentials component, right now we just have the basic Ionic input. We have our input fields. They're just rendered. We have refs that allow us to capture the values from the fields and we return the refs so that um, everything compiles properly. If I look at my personal info components, it's basically the exact same thing. We have an Ion item three on items, one for each one of the fields, and then we capture the data. All right, so that's just kind of an overview of the basic code. And now we're gonna to start to add the uh, VVAL, we'll go into some phases. We'll add the VVALIDATE, um, and then we'll add the composition API that'll allow us to kind of get the data, up, pass it all the way back up to the uh, parent component. Okay, um, now we are back inside our credentials component. We're gonna to start to add uh, the form validation functionality. So the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is include the libraries that we're using. And to get everything to work the way that we want it to work, we are going to use um, two specific libraries. As I mentioned, we're gonna use vvalidate, but we also need to use yup because we're using yup for the um, field validation. So let's import these. Um, they've already been um, installed previously. Um, you'll see the documentation in the uh, description of the video to make sure that you install Yup and install vvalidate. So now we have um, imported them. And so the first thing that we want to do is we need to define that these are actually fields that are going to be being used by, um, by vvalidate. And so the way that you do that is we're going to replace each one of these uh, references here with this. So we say const value email, and then we're going to use the, uh, the composition API called use field, use field, and we're going to name it. And since we're kind of creating this hierarchy with the dots, so we, we're going to say dot, then we're going to say um, credentials.email credentials.password, so that we'll know which component the, um, the values belong with. So we say credentials.email. And so that's email. And then we're gonna take and do the same thing for our password. So we say credentials.password. And then we don't need these refs anymore. And then we're gonna pass. So now these will get passed back and be used um, by the, uh, by the uh, component above. And so the next thing that we need to do is in order to validate these guys, we're gonna use you up. And the use you up, we need to create a schema. So, um, like I said, I've typed a bunch of this stuff ahead of time to kind of focus more on describing the content of what's happening instead of you watching me type. So we are going to out here, we're going to create this schema. This schema is used by Yup, and it also kind of describes, let's remove this from here. It also describes the shape of our data. And so let me kind of break this down so that you can understand what's going on here. So what I'm saying here is I have this object and is this object contains a, a one key and that key is called credentials. And then inside of the credentials object, we have an email um, key slash property and we have password. And then this, you can see the yep documentation to get better explanation about this. But what's happening is that this says that my email is a string. It is required. I'm specifying the label so that when it generates the error message, what I wanted to call this field. So I'm saying email. And then it's saying it has to be an email field. And then for password, I'm saying it's a string. This is the label. It's required. It has to be a minimum length of eight. And then I'm just saying that this whole object is required. Okay. So now this is the schema that describes the fields and it's going to be used um, by the validate to validate everything. Now let's make sure we connect the names of the fields uh, in the component to the names that we created down here. And then we're also going to use use form errors to kind of render the errors below it. So if we come up to our form, I think I left the names in there. So here's the name. So notice this has to be has to match what's down here. Oh, I just caught an error. So this should be credentials.password. And then so we have credentials.password and credentials.email. This autocomplete new password is kind of, I'm trying to avoid the issue where it always kind of 
brings in old passwords. So I'm using this autocomplete new password. It doesn't really work on all browsers, but I'm giving it a go. Uh, remember, we still need to have our vModel here. And um, yeah, and then we, so now we have our uh, input set up. And so the next step is let's get this uh, use form errors and use, utilize that. So what this will do is um, this errors, um, excuse me, this errors. So I can say error message errors. And this composition API call, if I say use form errors, I have to say uh, because of TypeScript as any. Um, what this will do is if there's any errors generated, errors will contain it. So then now we can come up and underneath each one of our items, we can create a div, I believe is how I want to do it. That will render the errors that are associated with that specific field. And we need to actually use the name of the field to get the errors. So if I say like this and we say errors, and then we want quote credentials password errors down here. And then up underneath this item, we want credentials email. And then this should show us the errors that are related to the fields. And I think that I've done all the changes I need to do here. So now this component, by, when triggered appropriately, um, will utilize this schema and validate the, utilize the schema, it will validate these form fields and if any errors are generated, it will render the errors below it. So um, we went through this pretty quickly once, we're gonna just follow the exact same pattern for the personal info. So um, let's hop over to personal info right now and just do the same thing. I'm gonna kind of cheat by starting to just copy a little bit of this because we know we're gonna need the yup stuff. So let's get over to personal info. Let's go down here and let's import yup and the use fields and everything. We know we need to replace all of these with the use form. So is there an easy way for me to copy and replace this? Okay, so we have the field set up. Remember, as I said last time, this time we're using personal info. So the fields are set up with personal info, personal info, personal info, and then the name there. Um, we need to do the same thing as we did before because we're gonna need access to the errors. So we're gonna do the, the use form errors and return the errors. So let's put that on the bottom here. So this will give us access to our errors. Uh, Ray, we don't need our ref here. We need to display our error messages. So let's copy the approach we did in our credentials form. Let's go up here. Let's copy that. And if I go up to back to personal and then underneath this one, we're gonna copy, let's do personal birthday. Paste that in there. And so let's not copy and replace. So let's go here. This is your last name. And then let's copy and come up here, and this is your first name. Okay. So we've named them properly, so they should be connected. Everything looks good. Um, now we have to make sure we add our schema. Once again, the schema is pretty big, so I'm just gonna copy and paste that over. You can see here we're naming our key for our personal info, data personal info, and then inside of that, it has a first name, a last name, and the birthday. So uh, now we have our two components that are all set up to utilize vValidate and utilize yup to validate the form fields. Now we just need a container to kind of trigger the validation to happen. So that's now where we're gonna go back up to our create account form, okay? And what's missing right now is you don't even have a, a form object. So what's cool about this, I don't need to wrap everything in a form. Um, I can just use yups, um, not yup, vValidate, another um, composition API from vValidate to kind of look through the page and find all of the fields and kind of just um, do all the validation, everything for it. So the first thing we want to do is import vValidate. So let's do that. So um, 
underneath here let's and see it has its callback called use form and so what we're going to do inside of our setup is we are going to um, create our form so let's go down here const the form equals not that use form and then use form has some fields that need to be set. The, uh, the most important one is called validation. The uh, validation I O N S C H E M A. We're going to pass that in. Why is this complaining? Const the form. Oh, yeah, it's just something used yet. And so for the validation schema, we're going to get those schemas from each one of the components, right? So in here, we're just going to say personal. Info component schema, and then we want to validate against that schema. Oh, why did I keep doing that? We want to validate. Come on, we want to validate against that schema, and then with the schemas, you can concatenate them together. So we're going to concat the next schema that we want, which comes from the credentials component. So Create our credentials component schema. So then we concatenate those. Let's copy, paste. Let's kind of clean this up a bit. Let's format it. So we've imported our objects, but then we've also imported the schema that's associated with them. And then what we're doing with this form, we're saying form when you validate and when you submit, utilize these the schemas that for the validation and then uh, we're also going to um, get all the fields off of the form by scanning the documents and finding any place where a use field was used so now we have our form set up next we need to actually use the form and so there's a couple of things we wanted to use with the form the first thing we want to do is validate it and so to validate the form there's a let's do this let's say response inside of here we want to say cons the form no, const response a form dot validate. So let's clean this up. Form dot validate. This is async, so we're going to do a wait, and then that will validate the form. And when it's validating the form, if any errors happen, what will happen? It will trigger this use form errors. This error objects will be set, and then the errors will get rendered on our page. So if we go down here, we say the form validate. Now we get our response. And then what we want to do is we want to check if response dot. So i.e. if the results that we get back says the field is valid, then we want to emit the event to the parent to say that um, we have valid response and here are the form values. Now, since the form values are all wrapped in refs, we want to kind of break this down and put it back into a normal JSON object. And so we're going to do that in two steps. First, the first is we're going to make the call to get the uh, personal info and the credentials from the form values. And then the next step is that we are going to emit all of those by um, decomposing the structures. So we do it like that. So this says get the top level keys for personal info and credentials. We're going to pass them back when we emit the event but we want to destructure this event and this destructuring will kind of take away the reactiveness of the component and we'll just get a nice JSON object back. So let's just kind of give this a go and see if it works. Let's kind of refresh this, get a page. Let's first on create account, we should start to see some errors. All right, so we're getting the errors down here on the personal info, but why aren't we getting them up here for the email credentials? So let's check this again. Uh, I think I know what I did wrong. Yes, it's credentials. My bad. Credentials, credentials. There you go. Okay, now let's reload this. See? Okay, so now we're getting all the errors because the fields are not filled out. Um, let's fill out the fields as appropriately. Um, you can see now how everything's working across them. Let's add the, add the last bit of information. 
create account. And then as you can see on the bottom, I got my information back broken out into the separate keys, which is exactly what we wanted. Um, just to kind of show you how cool this is. So like if I go in now and I just completely comment out, let's say I want a separate form and I just want the personal information. So if I go up here to my create account form and I take out everything that says credentials components, so let's just comment that out. Let's put that there. We're not going to concat anything onto it. And let's see, will this run? No, it's running because credential component is not defined. So let's take this whole credentials component card out. Uh, credentials component is not the. Oh, down here. Let's take this out. Hmm. Oh, we got a bunch of stuff going on down here. So let's comment out credentials. Take credentials out of here. Okay, so you see now I have just a form with just my personal information. All I did was remove the other component and everything works as fine. So like I said, the focus of what we're trying to do here was to show you the benefit of working towards a more component-based architecture and how um, you don't have to worry about being constrained about form validation and getting the values out of them by using this pattern with the uh, Ionic Framework, um, vValidate, and Yup for validation. Um, I hope you found this video helpful. Um, all the source code will be posted along with the video. Um, please make sure you like and subscribe and take care. Bye.